Hello and welcome back. Today I want to do a deep dive and I want to do an analysis of Elden Ring starting classes as the most recent videos on them have all been around from the time of launch minus Yaoi's video which wasn't particularly nuanced in its depth. So I want to rank these starting classes break down their strengths as well as provide data for what the best class is. Now if you already know your build this isn't going to matter you're just going to pick the class that's optimal for your build. But if you're a new player or a player returning to play the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC coming up then you probably won't have an idea of what build you want. So Vagabond stands out as a top class because it scores high in DPS and it also has the highest percentage usage among builds due to how versatile it is for melee builds. It also has the benefit of starting with a 100 physical block shield which means that if you aren't comfortable about dodging a boss's attack you can block and go for a guard counter. The reason Vagabond is so optimal for builds is because when you are optimizing for strength or dexterity or a hybrid build of intelligence or faith you're generally going to have weapons that have at least some strength and dexterity for weapon requirements. And on top of having the highest vigor, it also has good endurance for equip load. Because of this, Vagabond is the best build for the majority of builds. Samurai follows closely because it showcases strong combat performance, it has reasonable damage per second, and it has reasonable build usages. Samurai also gets the benefit of starting out with a bow, which means that it can draw out enemies from large groups and pick them off one by one. The Uchi Katana is good for breaking poise, although it's not as good as the longsword. Hero maintains a solid position, particularly for melee or arcane based builds that don't require FP, so this would be like pure strength, pure dexterity if you had a high strength requirement on the weapon such as Hand of Melania or Bloodhound's Fang, although that Bloodhound's Fang is more of a quality weapon. Or an arcane build where you only needed 14 or so dexterity and strength and you want to put the rest into arcane because it does have high arcane. And starting off it demonstrates respectable DPS since the battle axe has wild strikes on it and wild strikes has surprisingly good DPS. After that we have the Astrologer, which is the Mage Archetype class, and it's notable for having a high percentage usage because almost all intelligence builds will use its stat spread, unless if you're going for a melee only build. If you're going to do any casting, Astrologer is going to be the way to go. But it does start with slightly lower DPS since you only have Pebble as your primary spell. Wretch and Bandit have balanced scores, they show reasonable DPS performance, and they have moderate popularity due to niche builds using them, but in most cases you would want to choose a class higher on the list. However, if you're going to do something like a dual coded straight sword build with pure faith and you're not going to cast it all, then Wretch would be optimal. Or if you're going to do a very low strength and you know, 20 or 30 dexterity arcane build, then that would probably be a good choice for the bandit. Bandit also starts off with a short bow, which means that like the samurai, it can kite enemies away from large groups, as well as the buckler, which is a very good starting shield if you want to parry your enemy's attacks and follow up for a critical strike. The prophet is notable for having the highest DPS, but it falls lower due to a lower percentage of builds using pure faith. Because unless we're going for a pure faith caster, you're probably off choosing another class that's higher on this list. Then we have the prisoner, which has okay DPS. It's not great, it's not bad, but it's very, very rare that you'll actually use prisoner. Unless you're going for a very low strength, high dexterity and intelligence build. If you're going to level strength at all, or if you're going to do lean more into intelligence, then Astrologer or Vagabond will be more optimal. Then we have the Confessor and Warrior occupying the lowest positions. These are the worst builds. I would never recommend them. 
They have low DPS and no build representation of the top 100 builds, and it's not worth using either class. So for the data, this first bit of data is going to be the percentage usage of each class among the total starting classes, taken from the top 100 builds, and so that data is as follows. The Bandit is used 5%, Vagabond 54%, Hero 7%, Prophet 5%, Samurai 9%, Wretch 5%, Prisoner 4%, Astrologer 11%, and then Confessor and Warrior with 0%. Elden Ring has very unbalanced starting classes, and you can see that because Vagabond has 54% usage while the rest of classes are like 5, 6, 7%. Surprisingly, this is not the worst balancing that FromSoft has done, but it really would be nice to have more use for some of these other niche classes, because for the most part you're just going to want to choose Vagabond. That's not good balancing. Now, for DPS, DPS is the most important thing for PvE, since survivability is going to be the same for every class, because as soon as you get access to Round Table Hold, you, you should buy the Knight set, which gives you 51 poise, and has good damage negation. And after that, since your scaling is so low until you have max or near max level weapons, you're only going to invest into vigor, unless if you need strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith, arcane for weapon requirements. Meaning that every class is going to have basically the same survivability. So that's why DPS values are the only thing that matters in PvE. Profit has the highest DPS using Catch Flame. Catch Flame is one of the, if not the best faith spell, and the fact that the starting class starts out with it is kind of absurd. However, due to its poor starting stat distribution, it's not as good as some of the other classes overall. But Catch Flame has 229 DPS right off the bat. That is the highest DPS by over 100. Because the next highest is the Hero, since they have the Battle Axe with Wild Strikes, and that has 126 DPS. Again, shows that FromSoft isn't really that good at balancing their game. After that, we have the Samurai with Uchi Katana that has on Sheath as its default skill. So that has 125 damage per second. And then after that, we have the Warrior with the Dual Scimitar attacks, which is going to do 123 damage per second. There's zero builds that really need to use it. Then we have the Confessor broadsword that has square off that's going to do 121 damage per second square off is going to be basically a better on sheath however since the confessor does not have that much strength or dexterity it's going to have worse starting damage per second now we have the mega bond with the long sword with square off it's going to have 116 damage per second then we have the prisoner which has the magic glint blade spell doing 116 damage per second, same as Vagabond. And the only downside to the Magic Limp Blade is that it has a long time of sitting in the air before it actually fires. Then we have the Wretch with the Club doing 197 damage per second. Then we have Astrologer with the Glintstone Pebble doing 96 damage per second. Then we have the Bandit with the Great Knife doing 149 damage a second. So again, the total ranking is Vagabond, then Samurai, then Hero, Astrologer, Wretch, Bandit, Prophet, Prisoner, Confessor, and then Warrior. I hope you guys learned something, and if you're a new player or returning for the DLC, have fun with the game. Definitely get the night set from Roundtable Hold, and invest in bigger. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.